Jake O'Malley with Tim Priester for Irish Illustrated after a recently scheduled interview session with new offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock, returning offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock, and promoted linebackers coach Max Bulla. And there's a lot of meat on this bone to discuss, but I want to start with Coach Bulla because we were able to ask him about more players than Coach Denbrock because Bulla is in one room. And there's a lot of intrigue around the linebackers room. I began today with, you were plug and play last year at this point. Kaiser, Maris, JD, go to it. Now it's Jack Kaiser leading the group, but he mentioned there's some guys that can join Kaiser in that, he said, tiers where they, they can know more than one position, which is crucial for a defense. Yeah, obviously Jack Kaiser's a leader of that group, and he, and he stated that, and you asked about that. And But certainly, you know, guys like Drake Bowen and and, and Osbury and Sneed, yeah. Jalen Sneed's name came up a lot. It's They are starting from scratch, and so we're going to see, you know, just how good of a coach Max Bull is. It was pretty easy yeah. for him last year, but – he confirmed what, we, what we've said all along when, when there was some concern expressed by some people about, you know, elevating him to the linebackers coach. He was the linebackers right. coach last year. He says it. Uh, everybody around Notre Dame understands that. So he's going to hit the ground running, but it's a real test for him now because he, he doesn't have, you know, he said he could basically throw Bertrand and, and Leofa out there and they would know what to do. Right. Kaiser obviously is one of those as well, but everybody else is young. There's a lot of time for people to find positions. He was kind of discussing a little bit of that today. He did seem to mention that Jalen Sneed is a rover. Jaden Osbury is a rover. He mentioned Osbury might be the most imp- – he said Jack Kaiser is the most improved, actually, yeah. from the beginning of last yeah. year to the end of it, but the Jaden Osbury – Really kind of went into a funk when he went on the special and on the scout team. He played, he played four games, if you recall. He went into the scout team. Now he's back. He said people don't know about him, but he's going to be a really good player. I think it's interesting, the rover spot with Snead and Osbury, and I feel like he might use it a little bit differently this year. And he did say, we put him on, I put him on the spot right away, modern college football calls for a nickel. So there is still some yeah. wiggle room here when you're trying to use three linebackers for yeah. Notre Dame. We're, I, none of us are surprised to, yeah. to hear that Osbury is a guy that has, has caught on quickly. We saw that last year. Just by interviewing him last year, you understood right, that he right. was a sharp kid and, and you know very talented. They need, we said this in our podcast the other day, Jalen Sneed yeah. is the, the, the biggest wild card and a guy that they, would, they really need for it to click. Now, it hasn't yet, right. and 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 again, Bola talked about just that consistency, that foc- the consistent focus, day to day, yep. day to yeah. day, every day in practice is what Jalen Sneed needs. It needs, and and if he can, you know, if he can lock in and play to his potential, mm-hmm. he was the number one rated player in the class for a reason. If he can lock in and, and play to that level, he's going to be really good. Speaking with Coach Dembrock for the third iteration of his stay here, and actually, we, I'm surprised nobody asked until the very end who's a better athlete, Eli Raritan or his his dad, Scott, who has now coached at Notre Dame in 20 separate years or 23 separate years along the way. His challenge, he feels, is to be able to coach the linebackers this spring, but he wants to be in every room, especially in the spring when you're trying to install a new offense. He said he has the coaching staff that will allow him to do that because he's going to be spending time in the offensive line room, the quarterback's room, and, of course, he's got to bring along some tight ends that don't have their leader. He'll be in the room, Mitchell Evans, but he won't be out on the field. And It's an interesting situation for Denbrock kind of blending Cincinnati, LSU, and what Notre Dame had last year into his offense. Yeah, it's a challenge, and it'll take some time, and he admits that you know they're going to need the whole time to learn everything. He's very impressed with with, you know, your recalls having come coming back to Notre Dame, just how inquisitive Notre Dame players can be. Uh, they want to know everything right away. Riley Leonard wants to know everything yeah. right away, and it's just like, you know, slow down and we'll get there. But I think the, one of the great things about Denbrock is, number one, he's a better coordinator than he was just because he had to take ownership. That was one of the reasons why he could have stayed at Notre Dame but not been the play right. caller. He, wanted, he had more to do and more to learn, and so, um, you know, he became a bear coordinator because he was in a position where he could take ownership of the offense. I think I, one of the things I like about him, you know, a lot of coaches will be, uh, hey, this is my terminology. You have to follow right. what I what I say and what we use in terms of, of terminology. And, um, uh, you know, he isn't afraid to just go ahead and adapt right. to what the players know. He's been around long enough that he has heard probably every bit of terminology there is on the offensive side of the ball. So, uh, Mike Denbrock's a, a, a great guy and a, and a great communicator with young football players. I think it's going to work out pretty well. And I thought it was interesting he mentioned, look, if there's some things that the players like that are returning that they did very well last year and proved they do very well, that's going to stay in the, or that's going to stay in the offense, become part of that offense. 
I wondered when – one of my first questions I didn't even need to ask it is because Cincinnati, he featured two tight, two tight ends a lot. LSU, well, there's a galaxy of wide receivers at LSU every year, so you're going to feature three wide receivers, right. of course. We asked him, you know, what – no trade secrets here, but what, what, are you, what are you installing? And as he pointed out, he feels that the one thing he has changed is – he no longer feels that while the running game is the most important thing at Notre Dame on offensively, he doesn't feel that bang the head need to run the football. Yeah. And he mentioned something that I want to go deeper into with him at some point. If the numbers don't make sense, you're passing when it's a called run. I think that's the biggest change in college football in the last 20 years. It is a numbers game for almost every offense. I, it's the biggest change in him since he was a coordinator and a play caller yeah. here, I, I would say. One of the things that, you know, in watching his film at LSU, and let's face it, he had some components there that were that were awfully good he had a heisman trophy winner and so you can you, you can press just about any button and it's going to work but one of the things that i noticed in studying their film is just the variety and the adaptability to the situation and you have to be prepared for he goes from one thing to the next to the next i know that sounds you know pretty simplistic but i think that that's what he's become as an offensive coordinator you have to prepare for a lot with mike denbrock and I love his open-mindedness in terms of, yeah, if, if uh, you know, uh, the offensive guards that got, had a lot of experience like this play, it works for them. They, they execute it the best. He's going to be open-minded enough to listen to what they have to say and implement those things. He was asked to draw a comparison from Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels to Riley Leonard, and he said, well, I don't know Riley Leonard well enough, but competitiveness is the first thing that sticks out for Leonard. A lot of questions about Riley Leonard, and I thought it was interesting that Denbrock said, yeah, you know what? I was able to watch the Duke game live. He, he said the Duke game was one of the most important things for him. He said he watches Notre Dame football whenever he can. He saw the Duke game live with Riley Leonard, obviously an incredible game to catch, and he just finds Leonard an intriguing athlete. And I think it's it's going to be interesting for us to watch all of spring, and it's going to be changed in the, in the summer. He's going he's going to understand some things about Riley Leonard. We won't see it all in the spring, and it's all going to change in August yeah. camp. Well, one of the things that you also like about Mike Denbrock, as Notre Dame people, yeah. as Notre Dame graduates, is. He loves this place. He wants to be here. You know, that was the first question I threw out was, you know, the, the, the typical proverbial question, why are you back for a third time? And it's it's because it's Notre Dame. It's it, it closer to family. His wife's from Buffalo. Uh, he's from Michigan. You know, I mean, it, it, all of that works out well. But he thoroughly enjoys coaching the Notre Dame student athlete. He said, you know, it was brought up about a head coaching position. Of course, he would entertain that if, if that – situation came up but he says it's a young man's game and he's very happy to be the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Game. I want to end with this because we, we somehow Duke came up a lot it came up in Max Bull's interview as well he said uh, uh, his his wife's uh, excuse me his mom's father had passed away right before the Duke game and former Notre Dame form, football, player. Former Notre Dame football player and he, and he was able to coach that Duke game but it was it was two days prior and and Bola said to talk about the Duke game he said it was lit out there it was like a high school stadium I didn't really know what that meant until you came and stood here with me and said, you know what, that guy is a football player yeah. and a football coach. That's what you're getting in Max Bull. That was an enjoyable interview with him today. A ton of uh, enthusiasm there. You know he's going to be a great inspiration to the players. I like these two hires. I, I, you know, Max Bull is a rising star in the business as a linebacker's coach. He was going to go to Boston College for Bill O'Brien. And, and Marcus Freeman made the move that he thought was in the best interest of the entire staff. I think Max Bull is going to work out just fine for Notre Dame. Two long interviews with two new coaches. That's us. That's it for us verbally, right? But we'll be back with a lot of the written word uh, at irishillustrated.com. <laughs>